live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, and Darby. Bossa Nova! Bossa Nova? Chevy Nova? Excellent! Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 11. I actually uh, went back and made sure that this was episode 11 ahead of time. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, Episode 11 of the Turtle Power Podcast. Uh, welcome back, uh, and welcome, uh, to all of our new listeners. Um, we, gosh, and I tell you guys, it's still like all the time. We're still getting new followers, uh, on Twitter, uh, new fans. And, uh, we just really appreciate, uh, everybody. Cause you're not really fans of us. We're, we're all fans of the turtles and, uh, we're, we're just one big, uh, be happy family here uh not just I, I, me I, but i beg to differ i think they're fans of us <laughs> i know i'm not <laughs> well uh alex darby welcome back guys it's always the, the one of my favorite things when i mention to people we do this podcast is when i tell them we actually have fans the looks of confusion i get from i guess normal people it's how just could you have a me. fan right like that uh, exactly. Like people still <laughs> like the turtles, or Darby has fans. I don't. Huh? Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, I find it more shocking that Darby has fans. Yeah, me too. <laughs> totally. I'm right there with you, man. But when Alex, when when you talk to people about uh, about your uh, your involvement with the podcast, that everybody immediately says, "Oh, well, that makes sense. I mean, you're an awesome guy, and you deserve to have lots of fans, right?" Um. No, no. I don't. <laughs> the only yeah. person Alex talks mean? to is his wife. <laughs> this is true, and uh, and she 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 committed, so she is a fan. She has no choice. Last night, <laughs> last night I was uh, we were out to dinner with some friends, and uh, uh, me and uh, my wife Jessica, and uh, like uh, we were talking. Of course, I always talk about the podcast, and I was talking to our friends about the podcast, and they said, uh, "What what episode are you on?" And I, I looked over to Jessica and I said, I don't know, honey, what? Never mind. I don't know what I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> she has no idea. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. You know, but behind uh, every great man is a woman rolling her eyes, right? Uh, I, I'm not quite sure that's how it goes, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, it's uh, in addition to uh, all of our, our new listeners, we've uh, um, some some uh, some listeners of, of significance. Uh, uh, the famed turtle fan Michelle Ivy over at the Cowabunga Corner is uh, following us on Twitter. So, uh, shout out to uh, to all the great work that she's done there, and also to uh, a new fan of ours at tmnt underscore the demilo is uh, a new fan of ours. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually one of darby's fans yeah absolutely she, I mean, is, she follows me <laughs> so upset but um yeah so you know shout out to you venus what's up girl you don't yeah. exist <laughs> oh she exists <laughs> she it, hey we all know about the multiverse and uh you know in the multiverse <laughs> venus definitely exists exists in 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 our hearts, I'd say for you know the most accurate. That. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, in addition, uh, I know our last uh, our last episode was our big video game special. Uh, that was something that we've been wanting to do for a while. So I guess uh, 
appropriate that that turns out to be our our big ten. I don't know. Is ten is, is the tenth episode a, a big deal? I'm not. It, probably not. Um, yes, it kind of is. Uh, with uh, Mitch Dyer at Mitchy D on Twitter from IGN, and uh, you know, w- wouldn't you know it? Uh, I think. Uh, but, <laughs> and we'll get into this in the news, but apparently some people in some very high places are listening to the show because as soon as we talk about something, the turtle universe makes it happen. So, uh, but we'll get into that shortly. Um, as far as some updates, uh, um, uh, Darby, you're, uh, you're a, uh, a new uncle and, uh, your nephew said his favorite turtle was, uh, not a new uncle, but well, I, uh, you have a new Christmas nephew. This time, I went to go visit my sister and her family, and I asked my two nephews. One is, uh, oh God, they're like seven and four, and I asked the seven-year-old who his favorite turtle was, and he said the purple one. Bam! Proud uncle, so happy. <laughs> And then, and, and then the younger one said the red one. Uh, I, there might be something wrong with him. We're still looking into that. You didn't put that in your tweet. I noticed that that was missing. <laughs> well, yeah. There, <laughs> Conveniently we're still missing. That. Well, that's interesting. Um, yes. And uh, didn't you just go to uh, to Vail to uh, do some uh, some snowboarding? So much snowboarding in Vail. So much fun. So much Booyaka Shao screaming. Okay, so that's what I was going to ask. Was it was it Booyakasha or was it Kawabunga? It was it was Kawabunga when I was having a good time, and then when I would fall and hurt myself, it was Booyakasha. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, Alex, uh, yeah, congratulations uh, on your wedding. Thank you. Yeah, we. Uh, uh, it's it's <laughs> it's been that long since we've talked about. Uh, all this uh, as far as having a normal update section but uh yeah the wedding was was wonderful and um as as uh as part of uh the wedding uh you gave me a uh an amazing amazing uh gift um and we we tweeted out a a picture to it I'll, I'll i'll tweet it out again but uh essentially it's a um and many of you may have had this uh when you were younger, but, um, it's a, it's a puzzle with, um, with April and it's kind of like a third person shot behind her and it's got the turtles and it's got bebop and rocksteady before they were in yeah, their human forms. Yeah. And the, the, the third person view is behind the turtles and, and bebop and rocksteady are kind of going after April on the rooftops. And, uh, you got that and you framed it all up for me and, I was going in there in uh, my new house. So uh, it is it, the crazy part was you didn't even know that I had that as a kid. No, so, no, yeah. I had no idea. And uh, just the uh, the fact that I had the time to to put that together shows that I have too much time on my hands. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was really cool. It was one of those classic rose art puzzles, you know. Wait, 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 wait. So Alex, you did it for him and then put it in a frame. Yeah. Yeah. So well, you. Well, so what you did, bought a puzzle for somebody and then did it no. yourself. No, 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 no. So it's <laughs> kind of selfish. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I'm going to have the pleasure of putting this thing together. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I bought it. In all yeah, actuality. I'm finished just product. Just give, <laughs> just give him a box and be like, here you go. Thanks for being in the wedding. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dress it up a little bit. Have it, you know, be a, tur- I turned it into a piece of art is what I did. In all, in all actuality, I appreciated that you went ahead and did the puzzle because I would have just been like, oh, now I've got to put it all together. I'm just glad. I, I can't. First of all, I can't believe I found it. It was actually still sealed um, and it had all the pieces, which is crazy because that's, that's, that puzzle dates back to, I think, 1989, 1990, yeah. something like that. So. Yeah, interesting thing was that the turtles were not really – they didn't look like the animated versions of themselves, but April and Bebop and Rocks that he did. The turtles kind of look more like a uh, more like a, a colored um, comics version kind of it's, – it's, it's weird, but I, I totally – as soon as I saw it, I, I instantly knew what it was. So very cool. Um, uh Dar- Darby, you uh, you also tweeted out a. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to mention this a, a picture of a uh, 
a Zelda uh, Ninja Turtles mashup that uh, I thought it was pretty funny. A so. game I would so play if it existed. It couldn't <laughs> be worse than the actual first game that we talked about in the last episode. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I guess let's let's go ahead and uh, and uh, get into the news this week. April O'Neil, Channel Three Eyewitness News. So, uh, it's it's been a while since we've had a uh, a news segment. Um, I guess we'll we'll kind of try to hit some of the big uh, items. Um, Toy Fair uh, occurred, uh, I guess it was last month now, and uh, we got to see some some of the the new toy offerings going to be coming from Playmates in the near future, and uh, some that we've seen before, some um, that are kind of unexpected. Uh, we've got, uh, as far as the classic line goes, uh, that that they had the. Um, they had the four turtles that had the you know twenty or something points of articulation. They're going to have a Bebop and Rocksteady uh, come out, and uh, I, I wonder if they ever. I don't know if they're releasing those or if they're making the turtles anymore. But if they are, I wonder if they ever fixed Donatello's lazy eye that he had on there because uh, <laughs> it was terrible looking. Um, otherwise, it looked really good, but. Um, uh, let's see. So what else? We've got a. Uh, we've got um, some of the some of the uh, the villains that we've seen in the show. Uh, we've got. Uh, let's see. Um, <coughs> Snakeweed. Um, Rat King. Uh, let's see. What else here, guys? The Rat King figure looks so awesome. I'm such a fan of that. Well, that the way they change that character around is 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 probably one of the biggest changes that we've seen with as far as the the new Nick Turtles is um, regarding a character um, that that was around and, and that they're changing because Leatherhead is, I mean, he's, he's very like his two thousand three counterpart. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's you know he's he's even he sounds very similar I think, but. Um, they do have um, uh, the uh, they're reintroducing the '80s uh, turtles in uh, in two, August 2013. They're going to have the four turtles. Of, well, the four turtles are available now, but they're going to introduce um, Bebop and uh, Rocksteady in August of 2013. Okay, is it August? Okay, yeah. So we still got a little bit of time until uh, those yeah. come out. But they look they so look, buff. They look good. They yeah, they look like. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know wow both of you guys on that one <laughs> uh it's it's interesting they they look tougher uh, as far as the the characters uh in the, the these action figures these classic action figures they look tougher uh the actual figures look tougher than the the cartoon versions mm-hmm. i would say oh yeah um, i was watching some uh some old uh animated series uh episodes i guess it was last weekend and uh as <laughs> the 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 cowardice of uh those two characters is just so laughable um <laughs> and i even noticed like rocksteady's ears would like pin back as if he was like like a cat or something that he was like oh, i'm sorry i did something bad so, i never understood why the scale size of like the the size of the rhino they were bringing was so close to the size of the warthog and i mean there's not much of a size comparison between the two i just never understood that yeah. i just never understood why you'd even have to get multiple animals why not just make them all rhinos right yeah that's true well you know it's all about the to toys. sell more toys yes it's right well, toys. Yeah. um i've seen these uh these um like mutagen um, what what are they actually called here? Uh, Mutagen ooze action figures. I, I've seen there's ooze Chuck and Mikey, ooze launch and Leo, ooze yep. scoop and Donnie. Just got ooze launch and Leo uh, the other day. You did? Yes. Uh, yeah. How do you like it? Uh, well, it's still in the package because my name's not Ryan. So. Oh uh, snap! 
<laughs> now, did you get the mutagen ooze canister that goes with it? Yes. Ah. Yeah, so. And that's like, I mean, it's different colored than the, mm-hmm. the old one. It's kind of like more of like a blue color, but. It's like a teal, like an aquamarine. Yeah, yeah. God, I said aquamarine. So much yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, and then uh, we've got some new vehicles. Uh, we've got a a uh, remote control shell razor. Um, we've seen the patrol buggies uh, already. Um, we've, there's a new uh, playset, which is conveniently uh, this is pretty cool. The whole playset um, kind of folds up into like a pizza box. So. Uh, that's pretty cool. But uh, as far as some of these new characters, though, we're kind of getting spoiled as to which happened uh, at the 2012 um, Toy Fair as well. But uh, some new characters, the Neutralizer, which is a, uh, I thought it was a frog at first, but apparently it's going to be a newt. That's a mutant newt. Um, and then... Mondo uh, Gecko. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're going to have a, uh, spider bites. They're going to have, um, a splinter that's in kind of a, uh, yeah, kind of like a samurai outfit. That's pretty interesting. Um, and, uh, um, cockroach. Now is that his, his character name? (laughs) Uh, I don't know, (laughs) but, um, I would think Mikey would come up with a better name than that. Yeah. And then... Uh, like Justin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the uh, the uh, Shredder, how you can take his helmet off. That's pretty cool, too. That kind of reminds me of like a Darth Vader or something, where you could take Darth Vader's helmet off and see see his face underneath. But So, uh, you know, it's good to see that uh, the... I mean, in every they they are flying off the shelves, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, as soon as they go, you know, I, I, I check the stores every once in a while, and and um, you'll see a new shipment come in, and then a week later they're all gone. So, um, but uh, in addition to the actual action figures, uh, they also have the um, kind of just themed crappy electronic stuff in the same section so you can get like the the ninja turtle cd player and the (laughs) the the ninja turtle headphones in fact i got a set of ninja turtle headphones uh little in-ear uh headphones uh for christmas so did i did you yes what which uh character did you end up getting do you really have to ask me that question okay well uh, I didn't know because for me uh, it was a gift. I didn't I didn't get a say, and uh, it was just from my uh, my in laws, and um, and uh, they ended up getting me Michelangelo. Now, have you used them? I tried to use it. They they're horrible. Yeah, it's they not are that the sound quality is, but they don't go in the ear. <clears throat> Even the sound, like I, I I had my normal headphones in. And on, I, you know, I saw the Ninja Turtle ones there, and I was like, oh, I'll try them out. So just after listening to my normal headphones, which are $10 Sony headphones, took those out, put the Ninja Turtle ones in, and they were absolutely terrible. Yeah. So, uh, and the <laughs> Come on, man. That's, that's not shocking. That's not surprising. Yeah, I know. It's, it's not, though. but it's it's still kind of sad. It, it, it's, I don't know. Like, For me, it was just the fact that they don't even go in in the ear it's yeah. like whose ears are shaped like this whose <laughs> ear hole is that massive <laughs> oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah they and they've got some other stuff that some other electronic uh stuff that was just kind of uh they have a uh, a new uh so i saw the turtle com which we we talked about before mm-hmm. and um you know, just kind of disappointed um, in the quality and everything, and so yeah, I, I, w- I would I would like uh, to see them kind of come out with some better stuff um, instead of just literally trying to get the the cheapest piece of, of electrical equipment possible and then putting Ninja Turtles on it. You know, take some it's, pride into it. I mean, I know I, I, I'm terrible about always bringing up Star Wars, but Lucasfilm is always very careful with their licensees. 
Yep. So. Yeah, they're doing a great job with the action figures themselves and oh, with, the, well, sure. with the vehicles, but yeah, with all these additional miscellaneous electronics and um, just other things that they're kind of got going on. It's it's it is kind of sad. Their underwear are fantastic. Um, yeah, you you got some some turtle briefs, didn't you? Uh, boxer briefs. Boxer um, briefs. I, I don't go straight briefs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, For all you I don't listeners. know. I don't claim. You're married to now. It'll shift that way pretty soon. No, 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 no. Oh goodness! Well, boys need room. They need room. <laughs> well, um, so yeah, it's 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 good. Regardless, it's good to see that there's stuff hitting the the stores. Uh, I mean, the action figures look great, but uh, yeah, kind of these other accessories. Uh, I'd like to see them. A little bit better. Next thing, let's talk about this. Uh, a, a story hit uh, um, regarding the IDW series uh, about the new City Fall storyline. So before we talk about this, we want to give a, uh, a spoiler alert. Uh, so um, I I've... am so excited for this. <laughs> oh, so excited for this. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, I... nice how that works out. Uh, so... Um, so, did I talk about a little bit about what what this what's kind of going on here? What what's what? Why is the City Fall storyline starting with issue twenty two? Um, it's going to be a seven part storyline. Why is this important? Because it's they've laid the groundwork for it uh, a long time. One of the first issues where Shredder shows up, ten or eleven, I forget which one. Shredder demands that Karai go out and seek Leonardo to join him, which obviously you think is a fool's errand. He tried it in the 2003 series. Obviously, it didn't work. But apparently, according to this source that we have, Shredder succeeds in getting Leo to join him for the first time. I mean, I, I can't wait for, one, Leo joining the dark side, as you will, Leo going over to join the Foot Clan, having him help the Shredder, in terms of taking over the city. And I'm also curious to see how the turtles are going to react to this. Hmm. Their leader has just left, is joining their mortal enemy, and how the turtles are going to react to this. I am, like, aching for these issues to come out. So so let's, let's, uh, let's play some, some, some fanboy uh, talk here. Okay, first of all, if Leo leaves, uh, who then leads the turtles? Donnie, obviously. <laughs> okay. Uh, try to be agree. unbiased about this. <laughs> no, no. I have, I have, I have reasonings. Okay, and why? Okay, I have reasonings. One, Donnie's always been the second in command of the Turtles, and if you watch the '87 series, which you say you're doing now, and I've been doing since Christmas, every time the Turtles are about to go into a situation, they always go, "So, Donnie, what's the plan?" Leo turns to Donnie and says, so Donnie, what's the plan? It's like, Leo, you're supposed to be the leader. Donnie, right. what's the plan? They always ask Donatello what the plan is. And if you read the, uh, the Infestation story comic, which I know you didn't, Leo was captured. Yeah. And Raphael actually says to Michelangelo, leave the plans to Einstein or Brainiac or something like that. Mm. Donatello became the leader when Leo got captured. Raphael told Michelangelo to leave the plans to Donatello. So I have I, it's me, it's not me being totally biased, which I'll admit I am. I have <laughs> evidence to support my biasness. Uh, true leaders know how to delegate, but that's okay. True leaders know how to delegate. Uh, Leo's gone, dude. True okay. leaders don't betray their brothers. Okay, now what about in the uh, the recent uh, Nick Turtles uh, episode where um, where Raf has to kind of be a uh, leader for a and time? And it goes horribly wrong. Mm-hmm. And he and he panics and can't make a decision. And Donatello says, "Raph, we have to get out of here." While we, while Raph is frozen and mm-hmm. can't make a decision, and Donatello actually makes the decision, makes the call, and they get out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I think this kind of plays to the. Uh, it's interesting because what we're essentially finding out here is that uh, with the Raphael character, it seems as though he would like to lead. But then realizes that he 
he he's, he wants to essentially be like the idea man, but then not want to be the one to kind of enforce everything. Because, or not have the responsibility. Right, right. That that if uh, you know push comes to, su- to shove, he doesn't want to be the one to be. Um, I don't know, responsible. Well, I, he I can't. Guess. Yeah, he can't deal with the consequences. Mm. If it, you know, I mean, it's easy. It's easy to say something when you're not put in that role. But you know, if he once he's put in that role. I mean, when he freezes like that, all he's thinking about is the consequences. What if I make a wrong move? You know, that's why he froze up. And then Donatello had to be the one to make the decision and get him out of there. Mm -hmm. Which is why, if Leo, should Leo leave, I mean, Donatello would be the next one up. He's the smartest of the group. He's second in command. And he's, a lot of times, he's the one who comes up with the ideas. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, um, and we're seeing this over multiple series. We're seeing this, you know, over through yeah. the multiverse. Yeah, um, I don't necessarily disagree with that uh, either. I, um, I, th- I think that it's not going to be just like that, that he's just going to take over. And it's, you know, I mean, I think there will be some some sort of chaos within the Turtles before that happens. Plus, and, uh, in the begin- towards the beginning of this, uh, the IDW series... There's even times where you kind of see Donnie telling Leo, no, we should do this. Where they, they don't butt heads, but it's sort of like a passive-aggressive, like Leo says, we should go this way. And Donnie goes, I think we should go that way. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, it's, it's, maybe that's another precursor to that. But, yeah, it might, just, it might not just be, okay, Leo's gone, Donnie, you're the leader. Yeah. He might have to earn it. Yeah. They, they'll go through an identity crisis, I'm sure. So looking forward to it. <laughs> so uh so uh, yeah it's it's a uh it's 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 good to see that uh you know they're evolving the 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 series and and uh and 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 you know i i think back when you when uh first heard about this storyline the first thing i thought of was the uh the third volume of the comics um, that uh, where it had uh, Raphael uh, essentially become the Shredder, and uh, and interesting that they decided to go with with Leonardo this time, and I think it's because it's through Karai, and we're yes. seeing that relationship also multiple times. We're seeing the Karai Leo um, relationship in this series, in the in the Nick series, in the two thousand three series. Or sorry, two K three series. So, I can't wait till we see a Leo Karai love child. Uh, I don't think that's <laughs> biologically possible. I disagree. <laughs> I don't think they mutated that much. Well, I, I say we put it to the test. I say you're a sick man and you should be locked up. <laughs> uh, uh, let's talk about the. Let's talk about the. Uh, the Nick series, the Nick Turtles. Um, just news just came out. It's uh, confirmed for three seasons, which is uh, which is good. Um, that should no surprise. Put it, yeah, that should put it over the um, the sixty five uh, episode count, so that it's uh, um, available for uh, syndication, um, which is I know is a big deal with uh, with animated sh- uh, series. Mm-hmm. Um, what uh, will be interesting is to see how many seasons they uh, they continue to go after three, because a lot of uh, series only go to that three um, that three season mark just so that they can get to syndication. So um, hopefully they keep going because um, I know we had our big discussion about the uh, the Nick series a few months ago. And uh, we had uh, some... Just the uh, first half of it, though. Yeah, yeah. And we, we had our, our our pros and cons. and um, But I, I got to say, it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is pretty good right now. It's I'm getting really more pros by the, by the episode. Absolutely. Um, I think it's, it's interesting, at least with the last four episodes, um, that they're they're essentially two parters. Um, the new girl in town and the alien agenda are essentially part one, a part B, and then the pulverizer and TCRI are kind of uh, even while they're they're still two separate 
stories they they do one kind of continues right where the other one left off so and also i noticed that they're actually come there's i mean they're supposed to come out on saturday mornings but they're actually coming out friday evenings as well these new episodes so um uh you can you can actually watch it the night before everyone else does if you uh if you uh, jump on it but you know it's uh, one of my favorite things about this series now and it, it kind of was in the first half, but they've been doing it a lot more. Am I the only one that just loves it when they just lose their pupils? <laughs> when they go when they go pupilless, that means they're about to do something, like, crazy. Yeah, I love that. They're, yeah. they're standing on top of the building, and, or they're, like, hiding in the shadows, and all you see is, like, the non-pupil eyes. Love yeah, that's it. Why, that's why I love the action figures so much. Most of them are just non-pupil. They're just whited out. Yeah. Sick. They're going into even the, even that shot where mode. they um where they escaped Shredder and the Gauntlet and they were hiding sort of in the shadows after they escaped him and no pupils. Yeah, well, the action figures. You're right. The action figures are pupilless. Um, the which which kind of matches up to so it, that's a I mean it's kind of kind of a weird thing to talk about, but um, so you've got the 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 modern action figures are pupilless. The 2K3 series action figures, also no pupils. Well, they the, had no pupils in the entire show. Right. The you're right. The uh, the original. Well, except for the very last season, I believe. Then they got pupils. Yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> the originals. Uh, the original playmates, no pupils. But the TMNT uh, movie figures, those did have pupils. And so do the uh, the classic figures. They have the pupils as well. So, well, and, and the and the the which uh, is why series, the, the larger the action guy. figure, um, the uh, I think it's the twelve inch, ten inch. I can't remember what what the size is, but the large. You, you know that larger Leo that you got me with the uh, with the yeah pupil. yeah that actually has pupils as well. Really? Ah, yep. so the the new Nick series Playmates twelve inch, mm-hmm. those have the pupils. Correct. Wow. You know what? You, you know what? Other ones done doesn't have the pupils are the McDonald's toy ones as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Those Since I'm the only one on the show who got every single one of those toys, I can say that. That's true. You, yeah, that's right. You got the uh, you got the whole set, and you got like I the want, display or I, something. Which reminds me, yes, I have to I have to thank our friend Omar Omar Homsey, who owns a McDonald's and is a good friend of ours that we grew up with. I. I told him, you have to get me the Ninja Turtle toys when they come out. And instead of just getting me the Ninja Turtle toys, on the last day, he pulled up in his car and he had the actual display case. Sweet. And went, <laughs> here you go. And I was, I was like, oh, yes. That is pretty cool. It was pretty amazing. But because I'm a lot like Ryan, I took them out of the display case because I wanted to play with them. Uh. <laughs> Duh. Well, I have... I have- I ended up with two of those. I ended up with the with uh, two rafts and a Leo. Okay. On the bike or by yeah. themselves? By themselves. I got the raft okay. on the bike. That's the only one I got. See, I got, thanks to McDonald's and our connections there, I've got all of them. <laughs> all right. Quit and I have off. to say, and I have to say, not, <laughs> this is totally non-biased, but Donatello's is the best one. <laughs> totally unbiased. Rass is the worst. I'm sorry, Ryan. Raphael's is kind of lame. <laughs> oh, goodness. Alex, back me up here. I'll tell you right now, Leo's toy is better than Raph's. Oh, I know Leo, for a fact that Leo's toy is better than Raph's. <laughs> Raph's is kind of, you know, like the... Uh... Raph's is like, uh, what do we do with this guy? Oh, okay. They had no idea. So moving it's, on. It's, uh... His size don't even look like size. They look like oars. <laughs> they do look like oars. Of course, yours, uh, Leo's, Leo's swords look like tiny little paddles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not like oars, like little paddles. Like little paddles. <laughs> little little paddles. Uh, um, Wooden shovels is a good way to explain Raph's weapon. <laughs> it's not even like a full shovel. It's kind of like a, one of those little gardening hoes. Yeah, it's just like, it It doesn't do much. Like, <laughs> Raph's figure, <laughs> Raph's figure doesn't even move. Raph's figure doesn't even move. His side just goes, meh. And it goes like turns out to the side. That's it. Uh, Donatello's yeah. bow spins so fast you could probably put out a three year old kid's eye with it. 
Oh, I couldn't even pretend like I was going for that. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> and, Which obviously makes it the best toy. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Dark Cotton. <laughs> oh. Bossa Nova. <laughs> well, um, so yes, uh, Turtle Power Podcast would like to thank McDonald's for their for their <laughs> generous generous donation <laughs> to uh, our co- our co- collective collection. But I'll tell you what I'll tell you what the, my favorite my favorite present I got from a fan I have to, I have to point this out uh, my friend Emily for for Christmas she's a clothing designer she's an artist and she actually painted a very tiny picture maybe like three inches by. Two and a half inches portrait of Donatello. Cool for me for mm. Christmas. I thought that was very nice. Did you just that? Uh, no, but I will. I'll tweet it. Yeah, I have it. Tweet it out. I'm looking at it right now. But it was definitely probably my favorite Christmas present somebody got me this year. Was that it was so awesome? That's cool. Um, all right. So uh, there's no easy segue for for this. Um, <laughs> b- before we get to the big news, uh, we'll we'll. we'll, we'll, we'll and big news is not really a, a, the right term, but uh, mm-hmm. so How about uh, unhappy news. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's better. Um, before we get to that, some some good news. Uh, like we said, uh, some some higher ups uh, at at Viacom must be listening to the show because right after we have our video game retrospective, what do you know? Activision, Activision, yes, the Activision. Uh, released a press statement stating that they will be making three, count them, three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle video games. Exciting news, guys. Activision is a huge company. Um, it, I mean, what what do you say about this? It's it's it, First of all, they say that they're going to do three of them. Uh, the first one's supposed to come out this summer. And, uh, I mean, what do you, what, like, what do you start, how do you start with, uh, with Activision? I mean, they have made some of the biggest games in history. Um, I mean, notably of, of uh, in, in modern, uh, history, they, they are the ones that are behind Guitar Hero. Um, uh, they, they're the ones behind the Call of Duty series, um, they're the ones behind, uh, all of the modern James Bond games. Um, it, I mean, it's, they're, they're making the new, uh, uh, family guy game. Or they, they, the one that came out last year, excuse me. Um, it's a huge, huge company that, uh, and they're the ones that are going to be, uh, making the new Ninja Turtle games. It, I don't know if you can tell I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, you hide it well. <laughs> uh, so, interestingly, though, I mean, there's, you know, of course, Call of Duty is their, their largest um, franchise. Um, so, <laughs> will will one of these games be a uh, a no. first person uh, <laughs> shooter? I don't Stop know. it! <laughs> no, no, I don't think there will be a first person shooter. W- could we potentially see a first person uh, person? Fighting game, a first-person yeah. adventure game, something like that. As as if you were, it's, could it's you not, imagine? It's not. It's not. In, I mean, it, it's possible. Um, I, uh, I I see more of a of, of a traditional side scroller for sure um, coming out, and uh, and then I wouldn't mind a I wouldn't mind a sandbox game. Yeah, like an open world mm-hmm. sandbox type game. That'd be great. So um, something along the lines of like a, a uh, Assassin's Creed or a Grand Theft Auto, something like that. Yeah, I was thinking more like Infamous, like a gritty okay. city scape, yeah. yeah. climbing up buildings and yeah, stuff like going down into the sewers. Be pretty sweet. Getting around by like skateboards or something like that. Yeah. And it depends on what it depends on what series you want to make the game out of. I mean, it depends on what feel you're going for. Yeah, I, I could definitely see the open world um, being incredibly successful if it's done right. Um, 
Activision doesn't have a huge history with that. Um, no, they but don't. I mean, this would be a, like a golden opportunity to to do that. Um, now, would you would you expect all three games to be kind of iterations of the same game? You have the first one come out, and then a year later, you have an updated version, kind of like what we've been seeing in, with Turtle games in in the past. Um, um, or would you see? Would you expect to see three totally different types of games, all in the Turtles universe? I'd like to see at least one that's different. Um, maybe two that are uh, based off the the you know the same iteration, but like one completely different. Maybe like a like a brawler, not like sm- like soup like like Smash Up because Smash Up was just awful. Um, but I'd like to see a good turtle fighter. I mean. I guess tournament tur- tur- uh, uh, the tournament fighters was not good. No, it uh, wasn't. It was it was just it was awful. Um, but I'd like to see something with a little more depth as far as character selection. I mean, look at all the characters that you have to choose from in the turtle universe, and they pick they like three out of the, the three of the, of the fighters that they chose for t- the tournament fighters weren't even known in the turtle universe. Two Oscar were- was created just for the game, right? You know, and, and we got the crappy U.S. version that you know <laughs> exactly. So, um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a fighter, um, but I, I, I agree with Darby. I, I mean, a, a, an open world would be so epic. Yeah, I agree. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, so let's, okay, so we've talked about what we'd like to see, but I'm going to tell you what I expect to see, and which is not as, <laughs> which is not as epic. I expect to see a Ninja Turtle kart racer. Mm-hmm. That's yep. Because they've done uh, two Crash Bandicoot um, kart racers, and the new series does have the the turtle kart. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I expect to see that. I expect to see. Um, I, I I think it's going to be because uh, <laughs> funny enough, Activision is the company that has made all of the modern Transformer video games. Uh, mm-hmm. War for Cybertron, Dark of the Moon, uh, Fall of Cybertron. That I definitely expect something in that kind of time or that that kind of genre. And then uh, last one, I don't know. I don't know what the last one will be. Um, could be uh, it could be a, a, a first person. It, it could be a uh, an open world game. Like you said, though, they they haven't really done kind of like an open world type game like that. But gosh, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? I don't. I wouldn't mind a side scroller if it was good. You know, do like, <laughs> like a retro side scroller game. Well, I wouldn't mind it. It's like as long as they do a good job with it. I mean, I really didn't like Ubisoft reshelling Turtles in Time. I didn't like that. I, I, it's just as long as it's a good game, I really don't care what type it is. Uh, it might just be me, but. Well, the, yeah. it, I don't believe the announcement said anything with regards to, um, you know, what kind of technical level or what kind of price level. That I, I, I assume they were going to be three full out games. You know, no, no kind of like um, you know fifteen dollar downloadable games. I was, I was assuming you know full release. You know, sixty dollar games. Yeah. Now I wonder if it's going to be cross platform or if it's going to be. Um, I mean, because I mean, we have the next gen coming out. Uh, PS4 is coming out uh, at the end of the year. Microsoft is about to announce their, uh, you know, the, their new uh, new console. Wii U is already out, so obviously it'll be for the Wii U. Um, but I, I mean, are they going to make? What, what are the, do do we have a, an idea of when they're? What would you say you said summer? The first one is supposed to be this summer, right? So that would be before next gen console. Yeah. Um, with the ex- excluding the Wii U, which you know, it's arguably you, know, it's, uh, you can argue whether or not it's next gen still, but um, <laughs> the next will will have to be next gen if they're going to do that. So, I mean, I'm curious to see if they're going to do a cross platform. Do you have any info on that? No, no, I, I don't. Um, the the press release was kind of vague. It was yeah. just. Hey, we're going to be doing a uh, a multi-year deal to publish, uh, develop, and publish um, video games, and it's it's going to be based on the uh, 
um, the Knicks series. Right. So now whether they turn one of these games into a game based on the movie is another question, which right. potentially Hopefully could happen. Not if Megan Fox is going to be in it, <laughs> then it's not worth it. Um, so it's, it's, uh, I don't know. It's exciting because we're going to get some new Ninja Turtles video games. Now, because with any new release, there's there's some level of excitement. It's it's not like an immediate, oh, this is going to be terrible. Because it is Activision, <laughs> and they, they, they make a lot of money. And they make a lot of money because they put out content that people like. You know, people buy Activision video games. So, um, you know, you, you, you hope that the the wrong people don't get in Activision's ears and say, oh, let's just do, you know, hey, it's, it's a show for kids, so let's make... Kid uh, games? Yeah, and which we all know is, is a terrible, terrible way to design video games. Um, kids need... don't like kid games. No, that's, that's, they don't. I mean, they don't. You are absolutely correct. Activision, if you're listening, you know, that may... <laughs> <laughs> Which we know you are. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, you know, you put out the press release as soon as you listen to our great episode 10. Um, we hope for greatness. Please, please. Uh-huh. A moment to reflect. Uh-huh. Ah. <laughs> uh-huh. And wouldn't you know it, immediately after we recorded this segment, Activision released the first trailer for... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. That's out of the shadows, not out of their shells. Okay. According to our friend Mitch Dyer uh, at IGN, uh, it's going to be a four-player online co-op brawler uh, with, uh, quote, skill-based combat system uh, built around combo-driven action. Now, it's, it's pretty vague but um the striking things to me about this game are that one it exists in its own universe separate of the the modern nick series the upcoming movie and the idw comics also the character designs of the turtles are quite different from anything we've seen in in modern turtles uh history and nothing like what we've ever seen in a tmnt video game It's going to be released this summer on PSN, Xbox Live, and PC. And it's actually being developed by Redfly Studio. Um, They're actually the developers of Thor, the God of Thunder, um, Ghostbusters, the video game, and the Wii version of Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. Uh, And then it's going to subsequently be published by Activision. So uh, we'll include links to the trailer and Mitch's article in the show notes. But for now, take a listen to the trailer. There appear to be no eyewitnesses to any of these crimes. It's concerning the robbery at TCRI Labs last night. It's now apparent that an organized criminal element is at work. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows, downloaded this summer. So, all right, let's, let's, let's get on to this, uh, let's get on to this Ninja Turtles movie. And I can actually call it Ninja Turtles because that's still what it's apparently being called. Um, first off, uh, the release date is being pushed back. Only a month, though. It was originally supposed to come out May 16th, 2014. It's now scheduled to release June 6th, 2014. And uh, I know it's more than a year away, but uh, we're going to have to do some sort of, you know, huge uh, Turtle Power podcast uh, event for for this movie release. So um, I don't know what that's going to be, but we're going to have to do something big. However, that was not the the huge news. And when I say huge news, I always like to uh, – ch- <laughs> here come the size already. Uh, when I say huge news, I, I base that we on – We mean disfigured toe. 
<laughs> I, I based this news on uh, my my Google uh, news updates that I get every day, where it'll say, you know, most of the time it's it's you know one or two news stories that have hit the web uh, that are related to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then I look down at my phone and it says. 87 new stories and I before I even see what it's about I said oh no what never happened? good <laughs> because if it's that much that usually means something bad lots uh, of people are complaining yeah um, and and just perplexed uh, so if if you missed it which we highly doubt you did but in <laughs> case you did um, yes it it, it, it was uh, Michael Bay himself. Um, Who's the devil, by the way? I thought he was Hitler. I thought he was Hitler. Is there a difference? Yeah, uh, I was about to say. Yeah, I don't. True. Michael Bay has said uh, in a brief statement on his website, "We TMNT colon we are bringing Megan Fox back into the family." It's like he's just trying to think of how, like, how can I make all of these fans even more upset with me. Like, what's what's the worst thing I can do to just make them all hate me? Oh, I know. I'll make them aliens. I think he's like, what's the only thing I can do? Oh, Transformer movie. That's what I'm going to do. So- yeah. Transformer movie. Same actresses. I swear to God, if Shia LaBeouf shines, <laughs> signs on as Casey Jones, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, like, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't do it. Now... Uh, hopefully you've, you've listened to our Ninja Turtles uh, script um, review, or it's not even. It was. It was. We went through the whole dang thing. We read it. Yeah, and um, Ryan read it. I read Ryan it, read and it we we, sat there. we went over the entire thing over two episodes. Uh, On we covered only eight pages. Yeah, we covered it in, in depth, and we immediately. Well, I'll say immediately, but it was very apparent that... Oh, it was pretty immediate. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, of the similarities uh, with respect to the the Transformer movies. Okay. So, does this mean, then, that we can expect uh, Casey Jones to be cast as a certain um, actor <laughs> named... LeBuff. I can't even see it. I, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, it doesn't even matter. I can't even picture it, but you know what? My, it, it's not going to stop Michael Bay from doing it. <laughs> uh, like, God forbid he casts an actual, like, redheaded actress who's popular right now. Yeah. It, it, it was, uh, there's so many other actresses I would prefer than Megan Fox. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I, I don't, and, I, and, and Alex, I, you called this out. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I knew this. I had a feeling. I think I think for Casey though, it's probably going to be uh, Josh Duhamel that he probably casts uh. um, for the role, which he was in all the Transformer movies as well. He fits the role better. Well, think about <laughs> now, and of course we're, we're still I wasn't very convinced. We, <laughs> okay, so think about it. We've got. We 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 we've got the script that we read, and there was, they said that they were going to go back and change it. We yeah, don't know how whatever. much we don't know how much, or even if at all. Okay, so let's let's assume then that it's still generally the same script, generally the same idea for the movie. Okay, that it's you know they're teenagers; they just got out of uh, yeah, high Shia school. Yeah, is like five foot tall. <laughs> well, Megan Fox played teenagers like seven years ago. Right. And also, if you said Josh Jamel, he is definitely not in a college age, you know. I guess not anymore. Right. But. Damn it, he's like, handsome. <laughs> but like you said, Darby, he's. Uh, Megan Fox is not a teenager either. She's, you know, she just had a kid, so, uh, which, I'm not saying you can't be a kid and have a teenager, but that she you played a teenager a 10 years ago. So, um, it's, a, it's an odd choice on so many different levels. 
uh, if if you guys don't know the history of uh, the Michael Bay and Megan Fox um, clash, for lack of a better term, um, she said some some very uh, colorful. Uh, words uh, <laughs> <Nice medic>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> regarding Michael Bay uh, to the point where uh, she was uh, not in Transformers 3 because of her remarks. And so they uh, replaced The movie still her. sucked. <laughs> they replaced oh, her with, was an, awful. <laughs> with an actress that may not be much better um, or <laughs> it may be worse. Which is kind of just hard to eye imagine. candy. That's all she was. Yeah. Regardless, she had better feet. So <laughs> you and feet. What? Well, with I love feet. <laughs> Man likes feet. What can you say? So it's a uh, it's a uh, it's an odd choice uh, on so many different levels. <sighs> I don't know what else to say, guys. Um, I can just uh, I, there's so many like. There's so many other actresses that could play her that would do better and that I could possibly buy as April O'Neil a lot better. Especially mm-hmm. if they're supposed to do... Like, Emma Stone is one of the first ones that comes off the top of my head. Me too. Sure. Yeah, that's one of the first ones I thought of. I think she would have done great. I mean, she was great in the new Spider-Man movie. She's good mm-hmm. in, like, everything I've seen her in, and she could totally pull it off. Oh, and guess what? She's a redhead. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she, she's young, and she hot. looks younger, too, you know? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's just... Yeah. I never have anything to come back with because it just infuriates me so much. I yeah. can't even like, yeah, well, you're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 an odd odd choice, and um, it doesn't seem like anything's going to change from now until when they start shooting, which should be very soon. So, um, yeah, I, I, I got nothing else. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. And, uh, and and cry a little bit more each time, <laughs> as well, our childhood the, is the sad, destroyed even more. I think the hard part is is that we are going to have to. I mean, this is not something that will go away. No, no, it's you not going to go away. You know, and you know, I was okay with the movie string from the you know original series and, and just kind of doing its own thing a full reboot i was okay with all that i was okay with it i i, I started not being okay once michael bay started changing it to the point where they were aliens and, but i'm like okay i'm still gonna go watch it i'm still gonna check it out and i'm still gonna watch it now but it just continues to get worse and worse and worse and he keep i mean she i'm telling you i'm telling you megan fox was dead on when she called him hitler and it's like he doesn't, he doesn't even care. He no. doesn't care about the the outbursts of why or please don't. And he's just like, hey, shut up. Take a chill pill. You know, he doesn't care. He's shown no respect to the series or its fans. Yeah, my chill pill is a boot up his ass. I'm just, I'm just saying, it's like at least have some respect for the fan base that have kept it alive for almost 30 years. And don't tell us to shut up and take a chill pill. Like, just apologize. <laughs> like, look, I'm making them aliens. Sorry. Like, at least say sorry. Even if you don't even mean it, at least just say it. Don't show. He shows no lack of remorse for any of it. Or just, or just like have sincere reassuring. You know, like, don't worry, guys. You know, I'm gonna make sure. You know, we stay true to some. You know, somewhat to the to you know when, to, to the original turtles or when East comes out and tells us like hey guys it's gonna be good trust me and we're still like no like that should right. tell you something right <laughs> yeah it's it's getting a lot of press though uh if if they wanted to try to get some press they they succeeded in that regards um can you be can you imagine being a father like our age and taking your kid to go watch that turtle movie and, and they so it. up Megan Fox prancing around as April O'Neil. Right. You know, with, with her you know, bright yellow Daisy Dukes. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. It's, uh, that's a good, that's a very good, uh, very good point. Very good point. 
you know, and having grown up with a series as a, you know, as a father, taking your kid to, to this movie, this, what's going to be a, sh- you know, a, a shameful, sad reiteration of the, you know, reboot of the series. It's grossly <laughs> shameful. I thought he was going in a completely different direction with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway, well, that's, that's all that. And, uh, what's up, Michael Bay? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. It, hopefully that. Hopefully we uh we see some magic happen and this turns into the greatest movie of all time. Hey. Yeah, I don't see that happening. <laughs> Let's stay positive. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm try thank you. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah, no. Michael Bay, <laughs> kill yourself. Yeah, stay positive. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but Peter Laird actually commented on the Megan Fox situation in the comments section of one of his blog posts over at Peter Laird's TMNT blog dot blogspot dot com. Uh, he says, my only exposure to Megan Fox as an actress is through her role in two Transformer movies and the wretched but happily forgettable Jennifer's Body. It may not be fair to judge her range of acting skills just from these three movies, but I think it's safe to say that there are probably hundreds of better choices for the role of April O'Neil. Of course, her name has promotional value, and maybe that's what they want. Who knows? I can't get myself too worked up about it. And then uh, he goes on to say, in response to another fan's questions uh, about Megan, Sorry, but I have nothing to do with any current TMNT projects except for annotations to some of the IDW reprints of the old TMNT comics and no control over any aspect of the upcoming movie. You should probably direct your energies towards uh, the company which now owns the TMNT and the company doing the movie. I'm not sure if you would have any effect, but who knows? Stranger things have happened. And finally... To another fan's response, Peter says, I appreciate your fondness for the character of April O'Neil and that she inspired you. And I hope that the new movie treats the character with the respect that she deserves. I certainly think it's possible and I would advocate a wait and see approach. So looks like Peter's uh, trying to take the high road Um, and uh, we'll put a link to his blog post in the show notes. All right, well, that's all the news we got for this week. So let's move on to our character spotlight. That's right, it's back. And, uh, by popular demand. It is, but, well, uh, Darby's well, been looking forward to it. It means me. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's for sure. All right, Darby, uh, go ahead. You are, you've been dying to share your character spotlight for. Weeks, months, years, even maybe not. Years. Technically, yes. Well, I, I think it was in 2012 when I wanted to do it. I All don't right. remember. So, uh, grace us, sir, with your character spotlight. Finally, my character spotlight. I've been wanting to do this for a while because of the. If anybody's following the IDW comics, which I know nobody else on this show is, there has been a resurgence of a great group of characters that have been changed for the, I think, the better. Neutrinos? The Neutrinos. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> has, the Neutrinos started out as such a joke in the 87 series. They talked, even though they were from a completely different dimension and had futuristic technology, they talked like 1950s hipsters. Saying things like hip cats and doodads and stuff like that. (laughs) And they drove these flying cars that they eventually left for to one of the tur to the turtles. They left one of them to. And they were very kiddy kid like, which I guess you'd expect on the eighty seven series. So it was Zach, Dask, and Calla. Calla being the only female who would become sort of a love interest for Michelangelo. Yeah. Dask was sort of, I don't want to say he was the leader, but he was, he drove the car more than Zach did. So I'm going to say he was the leader. Zach was the one with the pinkish hair and sunglasses. So he was probably the coolest of the group. Now, 
They were in a battle with Krang, Krang's soldiers in Dimension X, and that was all we really knew about them. But yet, for being raised in a wartime dimension, they were they didn't like war. They were pacifists. They didn't like war at all. Their cars had weapons because they were required by law. So that was the only reason they had weapons. Well, they completely changed them in the IDW series. In the IDW series, they actually come out of nowhere because they actually are on a mission to rescue, and Ryan's done this character spotlight, the Fugitoid. The Fugitoid has been brought back in the IDW series as well. And I'm not going to say who, but he was actually there all along. So instead of the Triceratons needing the Fugitoid, it is now the Neutrinos. And the Neutrinos are just straight up badass. They are soldiers. They are, they, they pretty much, uh, the best way I could describe them is like, is if you took Link from The Legend of Zelda as an adult, and gave them, like, Dragon Ball Z hair. (laughs) And that's the best way I can describe them. Uh, Dask is the leader of the army that the resistance against Krang, he is the leader. He is the general of the army, even though he's not that old looking. And they're, like, they're not, they they look like, I don't want to say jacked, but they're definitely, they're soldiers. They look more like soldiers. They're, uh, Zach is pretty BA. Not uh, Zach, <laughs> when they showed up, pulled a knife on Raph, like, and survived to tell the tale, which tells you right there how pretty awesome he is at that. And they rescue the Fugitoid, and well, they they grab the Fugitoid and they beam him back to the dimension. Sadly, accidentally taking the turtles with them to the dimension X. I texted Ryan like, "Okay, stuff is about to get real in the IDW series, and it's because of the Neutrino's appearance." Mm. they have shown up and they have beamed the turtles to dimension X completely by accident. And when we last left the neutrinos, their King and queen were captured by Krang's evil forces. And the turtles are sta- helping the neutrinos stage an all out assault against Krang's armies to create a diversion while two of the turtles sneak in to like stealthily with two of the neutrinos to rescue the King and queen. Can you guess which of the two turtles are going in on that mission? Nope. It's Leo and Mikey. Uh Rap actually has joined in on the full frontal assault with Zack. The new interdimensional stuff going on. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. Uh I am such a fan of this war that's going on. It's, It's taken the turtles completely in a different direction that I love. It's more action packed. It, and they're sticking true to their ninja ways, but because of the Neutrino's appearance in the series and the change that they've gone through, I am a much bigger fan of them now and of this new series. Wow. So that was my character spotlight, the Neutrinos. Nice. Nice. Okay, now, uh, as I mentioned, I was watching some old, uh, some old uh, 87 uh, series uh, <laughs> Um, they are not your 1987 neutrinos. Yeah. Well, there is uh, an episode near the end of the 1989 season um, called the Gribix. <laughs> the Gribix. And uh, essentially, this um, a portal opened to Dimension X, and this this little cute, cuddly character comes uh, floating through, and uh, he's a little furry character. He's got like a a ho- like a horn for like a like a horn not like a like a horn on a bull but anyway he's got a, like a horn for a nose anyway it's just a little cute cuddly character and uh if you fed it uh it would turn into this giant monster and then you had to splash it with water and then it would go back down to its normal size and it anyway, was Kala's pet yes turns out that it was then all of a sudden the neutrinos show up and they're looking for Callus pet and yes turns out one and the same so it always uh, it always kind of bothered me though that you know the the neutrinos showed up and they had like this tearful goodbye with the turtles thinking they were never going to see him again but then when the grimix escapes apparently they can just come in and out of our dimension whenever they want <laughs> i know <laughs> uh, you know it's uh 
they didn't uh, uh, keep track of. Uh, I mean, they didn't keep track of a lot of stuff during the no, uh, they didn't seven not. series. So, um, but this new IDW neutrinos ain't your mama's neutrinos. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> they are. Uh, uh, they are. I love them. I am such a big fan of these new neutrinos. That's good. That's good. Um, uh, I will, I, Alex, if, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to go next. Uh, I've got a nice segue. Uh, in addition to uh, seeing the neutrinos in, uh, in some of these older episodes, I also got to see the fifth turtle. Do you guys remember the name of the fifth turtle? Zach was already done on this show, my friend. Okay, so good. So you got Zach. Okay, now do you remember the sixth turtle? Is, is that his? Is that Spike? No. Nope. Or is that his like cousin? It wasn't Zach's his cousin. cousin. It was his brother. He has an older brother named Walt. So uh, the the episode goes that. Uh, Zach brings his brother down uh, to, um, and uh, let me let me see if I can find the uh, the actual name of the episode. To meet the turtles. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he brings him he brings him down into the sewers to uh, to meet the turtles. There was actually a couple episodes in a row that Zach was in. Uh, he was in one with um, with a uh, his his friend. It's a uh, a girl named Caitlin. And, uh, so the, the two of them are in one episode and then the next episode, uh, Zach's there with his brother, Walt. So he's meets him down there or brings him down there to meet the turtles and everything, which just seems like just really like horrible idea. Bring in, <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, he brings him down there and, and, uh, they're showing him a, uh, this little scrapbook essentially, uh, of like the, the turtles past and it's got little pictures of the turtles, like when they were normal turtles and which I, who took that picture? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, and, uh, some, they've got like, uh, the, like Napoleon Bonafrog, they've got a little picture of him in there. And so th- that was actually pretty cool to see some, some call outs to some old episodes, but so anyway, the, in, included in that is the one and only map to the turtles' lair in the uh, in the sewers. So immediately, I'm I'm saying, okay, time out. There's one map. Why? First of all, if there's like if there's a map at all, then. I, I know this is the late '80s. They've got copy machines. <laughs> <laughs> April works at a news place; like <laughs> she can make a copy if necessary. Uh, and then, secondly, why? Why do you have a <laughs> a map to anybody that should need to go there? Uh, you know, <laughs> already knows how to get there. <laughs> already know how to get there. Um, yeah. So, anyway. Uh, so they're showing, uh, Walt and, and, uh, Zach and Walt eventually leave and, and, uh, they, uh, they're taken off and, and, uh, turns out Walt actually stole the, uh, <laughs> stole the little, uh, the little scrapbook, um, which includes the map. So. Uh, long story short, uh, Shredder eventually figures out that they've got this, and uh, so they go chasing after him uh, and both, and and because uh, they want the the map. And uh, at the end, um, you know, everything turns out okay as it always did in the original series. And uh, the turtles were like, "Oh, don't worry about it, Walt. It's okay that you stole something from us, and then said that you were sorry about it." And uh, <laughs> as long as so, you apologize, so, so much so that we're going to name you the sixth turtle. <laughs> and I was just like, "I'm like," it was one of those things where I'm just staring at the screen, like, "Come on, really?" Like, if you want to no. be a turtle, just steal from them and then apologize for it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Apparently, that's his, so. Of all the things that Bebop and Rocksteady have done, all they have to do is say they're sorry, and then they can be the seventh and eighth turtle. Exactly. No, 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 no. <laughs> so hey, much so. Zach at least did something. Zach sent the Technic drone, Technic drone, like back to like the Earth's core. No, like, so, Zach earned it. Okay, but so much so that even at the very end of the. Uh, the episode Michelangelo says, "Well, we just need to find a seventh and eighth turtle, and then we can retire." Bebop and Rocksteady. See, <laughs> it, it you've got the end of the series right there. Uh, stop it! <laughs> just stop! Stop it, Michael Bay! Come on. <laughs> oh wait, Michael, if you're listening, don't pay attention to what I just said. <laughs> you've heard nothing here. Uh, um, so anyway, that is my incredibly random Darby esque, uh, character spotlight. One that is just totally out of left field. And, uh, I love that I become an adjective for stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I'm going to look up what the name of that episode was. And, uh, Alex, you can, uh, go ahead with yours. Okay. Um, Oh, my character spotlight is a uh, it's a character that's known uh, in the IDW series, um, so comic book only. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure, you all have heard of him. It's Old Hob. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, Hob. Ah, uh, yes. So, uh, for those of you who have not read any of the comics, um, Old Hob is a uh, he's <laughs> a one-eyed cat mutant. Um, I guess is, is one of the best descriptions I found for him. Um, he's he's kind of uh, wears really crappy clothes, so he's not very fashionable. And um, he has one eye; he has an eye patch. So as uh, as I described him, um, he uh, first came in uh, when the uh, he was uh, basically a stray cat, um, and he came across turtles and Splinter when they were dropped, uh, and um, he was exposed to the uh, to the mutagen. Um, he tried to <laughs> run off with a with a pre-mutated Raphael, and uh, just to kind of explain why he only has one eye. Um, Splinter, in his um, badassery, clawed his eye out because that's what he does. And when he was Raphael's just a life. rat, right? Uh, and uh, saved Raphael, as many have to do. And. Um, <laughs> So um, he's 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 really uh, kind of a he's well he's definitely a villain throughout the whole uh, comic book series. He kind of makes uh, cameos here and there, here and there. Um, he, he ended up teaming up with Baxter Stockman, um, which uh, most of most everybody thought um, that was actually his end. He goes on this uh, this huge uh, series with, uh, with 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 Stockman where. Uh, you know, they're trying to take down the turtles and go figure. And um, he actually, uh, Stockman grants Hob control of all the mousers. So as uh, as have been, has been ton- done in the past, they destroy the turtle hi- turtles hideout and they kidnap Splinter. Uh, and obviously when things are looking bleak, you know, we, you would think, you know, the turtles would end up coming to the rescue. But what actually ended up saving Splinter uh, was uh, the... Um, the laboratory was attacked by the foot. So uh, the foot clan um, ended up knocking out uh, old Hob and uh, where this is where everybody thought this was the end of uh, old Hobbs Baxter Stockman and all his uh, insane craziness ended up shooting old Hob just shot him dead while he was laying there unconscious. Because he felt that he, he his usefulness had run its course. This just goes to show you how devious Baxter was compared to like current uh, his current reiteration in the new series. Because mm. Baxter was crazy, man. And um, later on, uh, old Hob again, like everybody thought he was dead because you, you didn't see him in any uh, in any other comics for a little while. And then he ended up appearing um, alive at the end of it was issue 16 IDW. Um, he encountered Slash on the shore of a beach and they kind of uh, kind of had their little their little engagement there. But um, he's he's really uh, for for those who, who read the comics, uh, which I 
am starting to get a little... I'm not nearly at Darby's level, but um, for those who read the comics, you'll see a lot of old Tom. Um, and he uh, he is... He's quite vicious. He's an incredibly skilled fighter, and yeah, he's a very, very... He, he's incredibly vicious. He's one of the... He's one of, I mean, I would love to see a, a, a old Hob in one of the animated series. He's crazy, man. He'd fit in well in the O three 3 series, I think. I think he would, too. I agree. And uh, just uh, just kind of a fun fact, uh, Old Hob's name stems from a colloquial name for the devil. So, very fitting. Uh, kind of just a little fun fact there. But that's all I got on Old Hob. So, um, I'm sure Darby has more to add on him, having read the comics a lot longer than I have. Um, and if you have anything to add, feel free. But that's uh, all I got on Hob for right now. No, you got it pretty well. One-eyed, mutated cat, pretty vicious. He's just... He is all. He makes no qualms about wanting to just straight up murder, kill, destroy the turtles. Mm-hmm. Not defeat them. It's not like I'm going to defeat you. It's like no, I'm going to kill you all dead with like these mousers or this gun, stuff like that. Okay. He is a very vicious character. Pretty awesome. Oh uh, yeah, I boy, I was kind of a little somber when it appeared that Baxter Stockman killed him, but then, like you said, he showed up on the beach with Slash. And it looks like he's got a plan. In mo- he's, he says he's got a plan set up for Slash. So we'll see how this goes. I'm sure chances are he's not just going to go after the Turtles. He'll probably go after Baxter Stockman as well. Yep. So it should be pretty interesting to see how this plays out. Revenge in the Horizon. Yep. So very good, Alex. That sounded like a great <laughs> character spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, All right. Wow. So um, we got we got some Clements here. Uh, shout out to the Nerdist for <laughs> inventing yep, the you word You realize Clements. that nobody understands why we're laughing, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Um, sure. <laughs> uh, we got a, a question from at the, uh, the Slintro. At the C L I N T R O, uh, he asked if we need a, a fourth member of the podcast. Um, well, That's probably the most popular question we keep getting asked. We, we do we do get uh, asked that question a lot. Um, it, it's really a matter of it's hard enough to get the three of us together. <laughs> That's why it's every month um, because not because there's not enough to talk about, but because it takes a month for all of us to be able to get together. So, um, we appreciate the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, sentiment and the interest. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think we're probably going to keep it at three for now, but, uh, thank you for, for listening and, and we hope that you continue to do so. And, uh, we got, uh, a couple of, uh, tweets from, um, uh, at Mitch Netzer, uh, who's uh, a, a fan of ours, and uh, he uh, wanted to share some of his thoughts on uh, the uh, the series, on the IDW series. Uh, he says he's not a, much of a fan of the interdimensional stuff, uh, but it's still good, and that the uh, the art since the uh, Duncan left uh, is atrocious. It is uh, pretty bad. Really. So well, the turtles concur. just have changed their – like I liked how they looked at the very beginning, but since he left, they mm-hmm. look completely different. You know, the, the background – he says the backgrounds, the tur- the faces, everything. It's just flat and bland. Um, and he says he may quit reading. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think IDW needs this kind of feedback. To say that uh, you know you 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 brought me in, but no, I'm not so happy with the the quality. So um, that's kind of sad to hear. Uh, he does love the story overall, though. Um, it's kept him coming back every month, and uh, and also got him to buy the uh, the back issues and the uh, the micro series and infestation. So, um, so. Uh, I guess that's gonna uh, that's gonna close us out here uh, for a. Uh, I think it was a good episode. It's a good episode eleven. It's uh, it's you know it's gonna be hard to uh, eclipse the greatness of our well, video game retrospective, but. Uh, yeah, I think it was a good episode. We started out strong. We we kind of ended on a limp note, so it's basically you know <laughs> my sex life. But. Uh, <laughs> 
You're married now, bud. Get used uh, to it. <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, you know, I'm sorry, honey. If, if you're listening, it, 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 is, it is fantastic. She's not listening. <laughs> My wife's not listening. It's okay. Um, it's very good. And uh, yeah, so uh, thanks again to all our listeners. Uh, guys, do you have a uh, suggestion for uh, our song of the show today? Cowabunga. <laughs> From the coming out of their shells? I was like, that was a song. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, there's there's two versions. There's the version from uh, Secret of the U's soundtrack. Nope. And then there's nope. the version from the coming out of their shells. Coming out of their shells. Now, Always did, coming out of their shells. That will be our song of the show. Yay! Very good. All right, Bossa guys. Nova. Girls, fans, fellow turtle fanatics, thanks for listening. Thanks, uh, Darby and uh, Alex. Uh, you can find uh, your stuff on, on the Twitters. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can remember these off the top of my head. Darby, you are at Lobo DTP. Is that right? Uh, what was it? Your Twitter. What was it? At Lobo DTP. That's, yeah, that sounds about right. Is it DTP? DTP. It's, I don't think it's DTP. Uh, I, I think so. I think it's just DP. No, it's DTP. Is it DTP? That's sort of my, yeah, sort of <laughs> part of my name, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'll look this up. It is at Lobo DTP. And there it uh, is. Alex at A Rodriguez 2005. You can find me at Fig Don Pat. And you can follow us, uh, the entire show, at TMNT yeah. Podcast. I, I, I'd also like to l- uh, let all my Twitter followers know that um, I have You're resolved... You're a baseball player? <laughs> no. Well, that, there's that. Uh, I also, um, I have resolved the issue with my Twitter feed being hacked. Uh, so, um, sorry for all the uh, random uh, links and... All the fun I was stuff. Wondering why you were being so racist and anti-Semitic on Twitter lately? <laughs> no, no, that that was that was me. That was me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, <but laughs> that was <laughs> man. A classy note. <laughs> you, that was a softball. You just underhanded that right to uh, right to him, Alex. You knocked it out of the park. Good job. Visit our. So I probably swung and missed, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Visit our official website, turtlepowerpodcast.com. You can uh, see our stuff on Facebook if you prefer Facebook, facebook.com slash turtlepowerpodcast. Uh, if you get a chance, um, subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And uh, you can always get in contact with us on old fashioned email, turtlepowerpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks to everybody for listening. And we'll talk to you next time. Man, you got to think the groove is sound. Listen to the tracks we're laying down. The girls are coming up from the ground. We got a mess that we have found. Gonna keep rapping. Gonna keep talking. We're ready to go. Let's get on with the show now. Hey, y'all, Leonardo is safe. He is the leader that you claim to fame now. He is the man my brother's trust. Choice. 
We needed something to help my fortune. We went to work to develop a plan. And now we're making music for all our fans. Look to die for the whistles and bells, helping each of us to come out of our shell. Michelangelo, let me kick my story, just say so. Born like a pet, just like the rest of them. I grew up wild, party with the best of them. Living loose, living large, with my humor now, I'm in charge. It's not that I'm crass, not that I'm rude, it's just that I'm a naturally humorous dude. Turn up the volume, baby, let's pump it. I see the foot clan, man, you know I thump it. Cowabunga is my favorite word, I use it all the time, or haven't you heard? I'm out of control, wild and crazy, hazy, baby, a little bit lazy. In the world that he'd rather be Than a turtle who is mutant as well I've said it before, he's coming out of his shell I saved this guy for the end of the song I'm sorry, excuse me if it gets too long The man is my very best friend I stick with my buddy till the very end uh, He wrote the music, I wrote the words He wrote everything that you've heard Splint to splint to this one for you You were the first who said we would come through What do you do when you can't think of a rhyme? 